Right folks, the next big step is gonna be taking this engine out. We're actually gonna remove the subframe and the engine. I've got a little bit of a plan, which I'll show you in a moment. But the first thing, we're gonna remove the engine and then we'll drop the subframe down afterwards. Right, so once I get the engine and subframe out, I've got a bit of a plan for what to do in this area around here. So I've been down to Mark's and I'm gonna use the front part of the jig that he made for the Cooper S. If you want to go and watch that video, I'll stick a link up in the corner somewhere. But he made a big jig for the Cooper S because he replaced the whole floor. I'm only going to use this front bit and it's going to be there. Once I remove the subframe, I'll then bolt this jig in. So uh, it's in place and I'll know exactly where everything, where the bolt hole should be to line everything up again. And I could just use a subframe. I could just use leave the subframe in there and that does give me some reference points. But where I need to cut out this tow board, I don't think there's going to be enough room with the subframe still in the car. So hopefully by removing the subframe, using that jig, bolting it in, that will give me enough room to work around it. Hope that makes sense. Hey Mini Enthusiasts, how are you doing? I hope you're all well and I hope you're having a great day. I thought I'd add some narration to this time lapse because this is one of those videos where it's primarily time lapse. It's one of those jobs I just wanted to get on with and sometimes stopping and starting the camera, filming the detail and zooming in can take four or five times as long to film and just as long to edit. So I apologize for those people that do want to see the detail. I know sometimes people put in the comments about slowing it down a bit and showing the detail but i have plenty of videos on my channel and i'm sure it's probably been covered off in a previous video so as you can see i've dumped out the oil there i've got a container underneath i'm just taking the coolant out again people have commented before you can take the engine out the engine unit with the gearbox with the radiator on side and you can just about get it in and out without too much of a problem but it is pretty tight and for someone like me, I'm not in a rush. It does actually just make it easier to take as much off the engine as you can. And my one sort of reason for taking that radiator off the side was I wanted to get the water pump out as well. And that's because the water pump is right at the very bottom of the engine. And by taking the water pump out, you pretty much get all the water out that's in the engine. So when you're moving around the engine afterwards, you're not constantly dropping coolant on the floor. Now I've already got quite a few components off the engine here, all the front, the starter motors out, distributors out, alternators off already and as you can see the wiring loom I've taken out, it's up on the top of the bulkhead at the moment and I've labelled up all the wires. Now I pretty much know where all the wires and plugs go on a mini engine but it just makes it, uh, it, just makes it a little bit easier if you label the wires up. When it comes to putting it back together it just saves you maybe a little bit of time looking up the wiring colour in a wiring diagram. The next step will be removing the brake servo. I've just put some penetrating oil on the bolts there because they're pretty rusty. And now I'm going to remove that lower engine steady, which is something on previous engine removals I've forgotten a few times. It's down the bottom there. You forget it's there. You come to taking the engine out. There's usually always something you forget. It's usually the speedo cable. Um, or, like I say, I've, I've forgotten the engine steady at the bottom in the past. I'll just show the radiator fan there because the fan's actually damaged on the car. It's uh, rubbed against something in the past. It's sort of egg-shaped, so we'll need to replace that. So that's the servo out the way now and next I will remove the brake master cylinder and pipes. Obviously again it will leak out a little bit of brake fluid while we're doing this so I'll uh, clean out the container and I've got container then to put the brake servo in.
just going around there with a Sharpie marker pen. And what I do is mark the front and rear brake pipes and where they go onto the servo. And onto the compensator on the bulkhead as well. Because again, saves you a little bit of time when it comes to putting it back together again. Rather than trying to work out where everything came from. just removing the speedo cable there because I've got the dashboard out and everything like that I've disconnected it from the dashboard end and pulled it through the bulkhead I tried reaching down the back and unscrewing the speedo cable from the gearbox end but the nut is seized or I can't get enough grip on it to loosen it up which is pretty standard to be honest but as this is a full restoration the dash is out of it I shall take the engine out with a speedo cable still connected but disconnected from the speedo head end and I'll take the speedo cable out once the engine is out. Now at this part of the build or the restoration it does become a bit of a problem trying to find space for everything so once the engine and front of the subframe out, obviously we've got all the interior out, all the boot out, everything like that. We'll have the steering column out, steering rack out. I just struggle to find space for things at the moment. So I've got a lot of stuff stored up in the loft, which to be honest, when I converted the roof space aloft a couple of years ago, it's been absolutely brilliant. I couldn't, I couldn't do without that anymore. It becomes a really useful storage space. So I'm just removing the twin SU carburetors at the moment. And once they're out of the way, that will then allow me to remove the LCB manifold. A good thing I've done here, which you'd have seen previously, was put the plywood down on the floor. One, that's to protect the floor while I'm welding it, but it also does, when you spill a little bit of fluid, it does soak it up a little bit. Because although the PVC floor tiles are very nice and they are hard wearing and that sort of thing, if you spill anything on them, any coolant, coolant's probably the worst or any oil you really have to clean it off because it, it gets so slippery now you can see I've got my blowtorch out my Rothenberger Spitfire 2 with map gas on it it works really real it gets lovely and hot quite quickly and I'm heating up the Y piece on the LCB manifold because uh, it's just seized on quite difficult to separate but 
a bit of heat always helps when you want to release two metal components. Quick shout out to the channel supporters that support the channel through buy me a coffee or buy me a beer as I like to call it. Really do appreciate your support. Thank you very much. It's greatly appreciated. So now we've got the manifold out the way, the LCB manifold, I'm now just removing the gear selector. If you're just removing the engine, you can just take the roll pin out the gear selector rod and remove the stabilizing rod, but I've taken the whole, the whole linkage out because we'll be working on the underside of the car anyway. Now I'm just connecting up the engine bracket. I think these are available from Mini Spares, Mini Sport. This is actually Mark's bracket. I borrowed it. Oh, I must get my own one sometime, but I usually just borrow it off Mark, but it's very, very useful. Makes removing the engine very simple. You're not mucking about with straps and ropes and things like that. It, it bolts onto the head bolts and pulls the engine up at uh, the correct angle. Last sort of bit before we take the engine out is removing the drive shafts. So what I tend to do is leave the pot joints in the gearbox and just pull the shafts out the pot joints. But to do that, uh, you have to disconnect the hubs so you can pull the drive shaft away from the pot joints. Someone did mention in the comments a few weeks ago that you could take the engine out without removing the hubs. I, I'm really not sure how you do that. If anyone knows, let me know, because it would make life a lot easier. But again, this being a, a full restoration, this will all have to come apart anyway. So yeah, if there is a quicker way, maybe um, maybe it might be useful but in this case it's all gonna have to come apart anyway so I might as well just take my time and do it like this Now the front suspension on the racing green, it's had quite a lot done on it. So it's got negative camber bottom arms, it's got adjustable front tie rods, it's all rose jointed on the bottom arms as well. It's got high lows on it, it had gas shock absorbers on the front of it, so it was a bit of a modified setup. When it goes back together, um, I think it's probably all going to be pretty standard. So. I'll be looking for some standard bottom arms and tie rods and going back to rubber bushes rather than rose joints and things like that. I mean, rose joints and all adjustable suspension is very nice, but uh, not so much maybe on a road car. On that near side front there where I took the front hub off, I did actually find the disc was loose on the drive flange. So yeah, bit iffy that, but like I say, it's all coming apart anyway, so it's not a problem, but yeah. I didn't, I couldn't feel anything while driving it. You'd have thought the brakes would maybe judder a little bit or something like that. You can see here I've actually stripped the drive shafts down and taken the CV joints off the shafts. The reason for that is, is because I still want to be able to wheel it around in a minute. So as you can see, I'm putting the hubs back on loosely and I'll put 
I've put the CV joint back in with a hub nut on there. It just holds the whole assembly together. Otherwise, if you don't have the CV joint in there, the bearing can all fall apart when you put it back down on the ground. So that is why I've done that if anyone's interested. Right, time to get the trusty engine crane out. And now, hopefully, all we should have connected is the engine mounts on both sides of the engine, on the crank pulley end and the flywheel clutch end. With them out, it should be just a case of lifting the engine out. Right then, that's the engine out. Wasn't too many dramas to be honest. I didn't leave anything connected for once. Now, I'm sure some people will come out and say, why didn't you take the engine and subframe out in one go? You can do that. You can just drop the whole lot out. However, uh, it's a little bit more controlled taking it out this way. And next step is we are gonna take this subframe out now. And, um, yeah, take the subframe out and then we're going to fit the jig in in place of the subframe and hopefully that gives me a bit more space when it comes to cutting out and welding with the subframe out of the way so let's go to time lapse and let's get this subframe out Ooh, what happened there 